Meet Sunni Ali, also known as the Magician Muslim King. Sunni Ali was the first of two great rulers in the Kingdom of Songhai and 15th ruler of the Songhai Dynasty and founder of one of the most powerful African empires in history. He came to power in 1464 and made the Songhai perhaps the most powerful state in Western Central Africa at the time. His successor, Muhammad Askia, came to power in 1493. The exact origins of the Kingdom of Songhai are not clear to historians. Before Sunni Ali, Songhai was comprised of the inhabitants of Goa in West Africa, a city along the Niger River in modern-day Mali, and expanded into the Middle Niger region in the 9th century to form the state of Songhai. Songhai grew in wealth and power as it engaged in river commerce and the Trans-Saharan trade. Gold, salt, ivory, copper, and other goods crisscrossed Songhai's border en route to and from North Africa and West Africa. In 1325, Mansa Kankan Musa, emperor of the Mali, brought Sungai under his rule. However, Mali's control over Sungai was short-lived as its imperial power waned in the 14th century. Leaders of the Sunni dynasty began reasserting Sungai's independence around 1375, yet it was not until Sunni Ali's reign from 1464 to 1492 that Sungai earned imperial status. It was not long after Sunni Ali ascended to power in 1464 that he seized an opportunity to expand Songhai's borders. Muslim leaders in Timbuktu asked Sunni Ali to help overthrow Tuareg, who had seized control of the city in 1433. Sunni Ali led his cavalry and fleet of canoes to conquer Timbuktu in 1468. Sunni Ali then conquered the prosperous trading city of Jene, Timbuktu, in 1473. Both of the cities were major intellectual and commercial centers in the Trans-Saharan trade network. They had universities and markets filled with gold, slaves, cotton, grains, salts, horses, and luxury items. Sunni conducted a repressive policy against the scholars of Timbuktu, especially those of the prestigious and cultural Sankora region who were associated with the Tuareg from Ali expelled to gain control of the town. During Sunni Ali's reign, Songhai surpassed the heights of Mali Empire, engulfing areas under the Mali Empire and the Ghana Empire before it. Timbuktu and Jene would serve as the cornerstone of Songhai's wealth and power throughout the 16th century. Sunni Ali did not stop at Jena, but combined to wage war upon the peoples of the Middle Niger for close to three decades. As Sunni Ali drove back Tuareg and Masi enemy forces to the north and south, he also conquered and incorporated various ethnic groups, including the Fulani of the Dendi regions. Sunni Ali divided the conquered territories into provinces and assigned those territories to trusted lieutenants. While Sunni Ali consulted with judicial advisors, the Sanhu, or House of Scholars, he retained ultimate judgment over all the affairs concerning his empire. Ali's death on November 6, 1492 is a matter of conjecture. According to the Tariq al-Sudan, Ali drowned while crossing the Niger River. Oral traditions believe he was killed by his sister's son, Askia Muhammad Ture. He was succeeded by his son, Sunni Baru, who was challenged by Askia because Baru was not seen as a faithful Muslim. Ultimately, Askia succeeded to the throne. Little is known about Sunni Ali's early life. According to oral tradition, Sunni Ali learned magic powers and Songhai traditions from his parents and their communities. The magician king also received an Islamic education. Similar to the Songhai kings before him, Sunni Ali combined Islamic and traditional religious practices. He contributed to mosques and practiced in the fast of Ramadan while continuing to worship gods. Sunni Ali ruled over both urban Muslims and rural non-Muslims at a time when the tradition coexistence of different beliefs was being challenged. His adherence to African animism while also professing Islam leads some writers to describe him as outwardly or nominally Muslim. Thank you for joining the African Archives. Click subscribe for more videos. Meet